Welcome to the AR Performance Squash Advantage, hosted by me, Ahad Braza, a former PSA Touring Pro turned elite performance mentor and coach. I break down tactics, technique, fitness, and mindset by analyzing players from the past and present, both men and women. I aspire to teach, empower, and guide transformation. Let's get started. What's up, everyone? Today's video is action-packed. It is full it's all about the boast or the sidewall, depending on what part of the world you're from. I'm gonna share almost all of the types of boasts you can hit, when to hit them, what the targets should look like, what the outcome is, what impact it's gonna have on your opponent, all of it. I'll even share some details about technique. So as you can imagine, this will be a detailed video. Take your time, study it, I'm not going to go into crazy detail with the technique. I could create a separate video on each shot when it comes to a technical perspective, but I will give you tips. And if you want more, please let me know in the comments. As always, if you like the videos, give it a thumbs up, put a comment in, subscribe to the channel, share with your friends. I'm very appreciative of all of the positive feedback you guys are giving. It makes me feel like I'm on the right track. So I'm just going to keep delivering. Let's get into the boast. So what is the boast? Simply put, the boast is the shot when you hit the side wall and then the ball goes to the front wall so it's going at an angle. Now you could hit a two wall boast, which is side wall, front wall, and then the ball bounces on the floor and ideally dies second bounce before the other side wall. Alternatively, you can hit a three wall boast, which goes side wall, front wall, and then you try to catch the nick on the side wall floor join on the other corner, on the opposite corner. High level, those are the two types of boasts you can hit. Now you can hit boasts that are defensive boasts, and then you can hit attacking boasts. You can hit trickle boasts. You can hit reverse boasts. You can hit corkscrew Philly boasts. I'm not talking. I'm not going to get into the the reverse boast or the corkscrew Philly boast. I've shared several clips that you're going to see for two wall and three wall boasts, as well as attacking and defensive boasts, which is more than enough for this video to begin with. So let's check it out. I'm gonna first share a bunch of clips of all of the different types of boasts, and then we can break them down a bit. So let's get ready. The clips are gonna start in a couple of seconds and go. So what you're gonna see here are three clips between Nick Matthew and Amar Shabana. The middle clip is Nick Matthew hitting the ball from in front of Amar Shabana, and he's in more of an attacking position. The other two clips on the left and the right of your screen are Nick Matthew hitting, again, also hitting two wall boasts, but not necessarily a, a highly advantageous attacking position because he's slightly behind Amar Shabana. What you're gonna see is that the middle clip, Nick Matthew hits a winning boast, so that clip is gonna end a little bit sooner than the other two, and then I'm gonna expand the other two so you can see how those clips unfold. So let's check it out. I'll play this a couple of times for you so you can see it. So let's watch the middle clip only for the first minute here. So check it out. He's in front. He hits that boast. Amar Shabana is going to the right. The ball ends up moving away from Shabana. Now I'm going to rewind this. Let's check out the two clips on the left and the right now. So in both cases, Nick Matthews behind Shabana. And he goes for a two wall boast. See the ball hit the side wall. It's going to hit the front wall and then it's going to land in the middle of the court. There it is. And each of those shots has a different outcome. You see this clip on the left, Shabana is taking the ball early. The one on the right, Shabana is letting the ball go to the side wall. And you see it here. Shabana lets the ball go to the side wall in the clip on the right. Shabana takes it early on the clip on the left. And there it is. He hits both of them. Both of them actually turn out to be winners for Amar Shabana. Now the next sequence of clips over here we're going to see is an attacking boast in the clip on the left by Amar Shabana. So the gentleman in red is hitting it. And then a defensive boast by Amar Shabana on, in the clip on the right. So let's check this out. So the first thing you notice, Shabana is pinned deep in the corner. So what does he do? When you're under pressure, what do you want to do? You want to lift Hit the ball high, give yourself time to recover, and check it out. Look, look what he does. He hits a nice extreme version of it. 
And then you'll see that in a second um, on the right side. On the left side, you see Shabana setting up and he's actually gonna attack this bull. So here we go. Check out the height on this boast that Shabana hits. And then on the other side, this one is super low in attacking. There you go. So let me rewind that. I'm not gonna talk. You guys can watch this yourselves for 10 seconds. In this clip, you're gonna see Ali Farag in black come and hit a trickle boast. I believe some folks call it the tickle boast as well. I've always heard trickle, so I'm gonna stick with trickle. Check it out. So this is a boast where you come in and then you, you typically shape for one shot, you show one shot, and then at the last minute, you, you can use your wrist, you can use your contact point, several ways of hitting it, and the ball goes in a short boast and typically your opponent is going in a different direction. And the final one I'm gonna show you is a three wall attacking boast from Rami Ashur and you're gonna see it over here. He's, he's aiming for the nick right in the front of the court so the ball basically rolls out. That would be the perfect three wall attacking boast. And he more or less catches that second bounce well before Simon Rosner could get there. Okay, now you've seen the clips. Let's break down the technique. I'm gonna go through this fast because this video is already super long. <laughs> first things first, we got three clips and what you're gonna see in all of them is the chest. In, in this case, we're watching Nick Matthew in white. His chest is facing that side wall the entire time. Racket is prepped in each example. The one on the left, we, it's a little bit faster. So you're gonna see, even in the one on the left, his racket is nice and high. And the other two, he's also quite well prepped. Chest is facing the side. This is a big one. A lot of people, they don't turn their feet, so they don't open their hips because of that. So always make sure if you wanna, if you wanna face that side wall, turn your foot to that side wall as well, because that's gonna force your hips to open up and that will allow you to hit a more effective shot. So now Nick Matthews facing the side. You generally, for the boast, are gonna hit the ball a little bit later. You don't wanna be hitting that boast too far in front because you're not gonna get that angle. It's gonna become really awkward to kind of force that wrist into that angle. So you wanna hit it kind of mid-body a little bit late depending on how much pressure you're under, where your opponent's standing, all those sorts of things. And then from there, you're gonna notice his follow through every time is coming straight. So he's not just flicking and stopping, he's actually hitting through that ball. And there are different ways to hit it. You're gonna see in the clip on the left, he's got an open racket face. So he cut that ball and he's got his racket face open to the front. In the middle and the clip on the right, he's hitting flat. So instead of coming here with an open face, he's actually coming across and hitting through the ball and hitting it flat. And that's how you can see his racket face is flat, maybe even marginally closed over there. So that's some technical uh, analysis for you. Pretty high level, but hopefully it gives you a flavor of what this means. Then we're looking at targets. So see in this first one, Nick Matthew hit a short attacking bow. So he's in front of Shabana. He's in an advantageous position. He has many shot options from this position. He could hit a straight drive. He's probably hit several straight drives, straight drops, all of those things. Shabana instinctively moves to the right. Nick Matthew intelligently plays that boast and the ball is now moving left to the left and away from Shabana while Shabana's momentum is moving to the right. That target is a pretty simple one. You don't need to over hit it. You just need it to be shallow, like a shallow angle and the ball fades in the front of the court. Now for the other two, you're gonna see the target is a little further to the left in the court and you can tell the difference it's the exact same court exact everything's identical the clip on the right the ball is hitting somewhere above this logo at the bottom the clip on the extreme left the ball is hitting well to the right of that logo so by changing that contact point the angle and the path of the ball are going to change significantly the further to the left on the front wall you hit, 
the further out the ball is going to go. The further, the closer to the right you're going to hit, the closer to the side wall. In these examples, the more shallow the ball is going to pop up in the middle of the court. So the ideal situation when you're hitting a two wall attacking boast is to allow that second bounce of the ball to end before the other side wall. So in this example, Nick Matthews is hitting a forehand two wall boast. So hit the ideal shot should be side wall, front wall, and then by the time the ball gets to the left side wall, it's already taken its second bounce, so it's dead. It's not coming off the side wall. And what you'll see here is, again, this middle clip is going to disappear in a moment because he's already won that rally. And then you're going to see the clip on the right has zoomed in now. And Shabana has, because of his years of playing and anticipation, he knows that this ball is going to bounce. It's He has enough time to let it come off the sidewall, and then he can put that counter drop in. This clip on the extreme left, on the other hand, this ball is actually coming. And if Shabana does not get it early, it's going to take its second bounce before the sidewall. So he knows he has to cut it off in advance. And there you see... Shabana has already hit this ball. He knew he had to take it in front and early. And over here, he's waiting. This ball is going to come off the side wall on the right. And then he's going to put that counter drop in. Just like that. And in both cases, Nick Matthew is actually unable to retrieve the ball. Now, one thing I want to stress is that most amateurs do not have the correct anticipation to take that ball. Now, what I mean by that is that a lot of time I see players either waiting too long and then they take the ball right on the sidewall, which is which is a terrible time to take it because then you're you're hitting your racket against the sidewall and you, you lose control. Most players do not go and get that ball directly the way you saw Amar Shabana do it in the clip on the left. What a lot of players also do is that they, when they move, they move with the traditional old school J pattern like this. They come forward and then they loop around to the side that can also throw your timing off. So the better you get, the more experience you get, you want to know when that ball is going to come off the sidewall, let it come off and wait. When you think that ball is going to fade because your opponents hit a good two wall attacking boast, well, now you need to get up on it early and then hit it before it hits the sidewall. And you've seen the examples of both of those in these situations. Now, in a moment, you're going to see over here, the other examples that I shared. So on the left, you're going to see Shabana hit that two wall attacking boast from the back. And then, and, and that's changing up a pattern. And then on the right, you're seeing Shabana hit a three wall. It could be two wall as well, defensive boast. And all you're going to see is that he's hitting it super high to give himself time to recover to the tee. Now, let me take a moment to talk about patterns for a second. In this case, Nick Matthew is probably expecting Shabana to try to hit something straight. Shabana's probably played a bunch of straight drives down this right side wall. And all of a sudden, he's going to rip this incredible, <laughs> incredible boast. I don't even know how he hit it so accurately from there. And you'll see that Nick Matthews pattern gets thrown off. So first things first, the one on the right is super simple. You see that Shabana has just hit this ball really high. By the time it actually comes back to Nick Matthew, Shabana has had enough time to get to the tee. This one on the left, you can, you're going to see Nick Matthew's movement start to drift over to the right side because he's looking for that volley. He's used to Shabana hitting this ball up and down the wall from that back right corner. And this goes back to patterns, like I talked about first in that video with John Shah Khan, which I'll link to over here for you. So let's check this out. So Nick Matthew, see, you see Nick Matthew's momentum going to the right side over here. And then he's having to then push in towards the left, which has now changed his pattern. The other thing I want to point out for you guys is Shabana's swing. So you're going to see Shabana has that open racket face and it's a full swing through the shot. So again, most amateurs kind of flick at the ball. They don't complete their swings. So really think about hitting through that boast or that sidewall the way you would for a drive. It's the same idea. And like I mentioned, you could hit open face or flat. 
Now let's see how these two situations unfold. Where is Shabana's target? If you remember from the previous clip, Nick Matthew hit his boasts in the middle of this logo over here that's uh, being covered by Nick Matthew's head on the in the clip on the left. Shabana's boast actually hits a little bit further to the left, which means his ball is now going to travel a little bit further to the left. He's also hit it quite low and fast. So let's see how this unfolds. So there's the first bounce. I'm looking at the clip on the left. And you're going to see that ball is traveling away from Nick Matthew, about to take its second bounce, right as it's nearing that left hand side wall. That's almost a perfect two wall attacking boast. Now, if you shift your attention to the clip on the right for a minute, you're going to see that Shabana hit that super high defensive boast. And now, Nick Matthews is actually stepping up the volley, but where's Shabana? Shabana is nice and central on the tee. The interesting thing here is that when you give your opponent that much time and you give them something that easy, they might actually have reverse pressure and hit a tin. This goes back to that video I shared with Joel Macon using that defensive drop. I'll link to that video here as well for your reference. This can actually put reverse pressure on your opponent. And interestingly enough, even someone of Nick Matthews level, he hits that ball and catches the tin. Crazy, right? <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next one, the trickle boast. You're going to see Ali Farag step in. It almost looks like he's going to hit a straight drive. And then at the last second, he opens his racket face up over here and he plays it into the side wall. Tarek Momin's momentum is going backwards. And you see that he actually put his right foot down first and he had started turning his hips to the left, which means that he was anticipating that straight drive because that's what it looked like. And Ali Farag has probably hit that straight drive. Let me rewind that for a second. So if you look at Farag's prep, he takes a nice backswing, looks a little bit like a drive, has that full swing, moments momentum is moving back, opens up the racket face at the last second, hits with that angle, moments right foot hits, and you see his left foot is going back and his hip is turning to the left to basically push and open up to go to that back left corner. And instead, he then has to plant that left foot hard and accelerate forward from there. Now the trickle boast is super effective for many reasons. <laughs> Number one, if you've been playing straight drops a bunch, what ends up happening is, especially if you come in from the middle of the court. Now one mistake that people make sometimes is that they come close to the side wall. They're not really showing the straight drop and then they play the trickle boast. And what ends up happening is that they get trapped in this corner and their opponent plays the ball from the mid court. Now, interestingly enough, Farag actually kind of did that here. He was relatively close to the sidewall. He came in from the sidewall. He hit that trickle boast. Because he had the deception, Moment struggled to get onto the ball. But interestingly, if I let this pl uh, clip play out, Moment actually hits using his skill, he hits a winning drop shot that Farag actually cannot retrieve. Instead, what I would recommend is show your opponent that straight drop into this front left corner. And then when you've been able to come in more from the middle of the court, show that drop and then play that trickle boast because then your opponent's actually going to come around you from the left side thinking the drop is coming. And then the ball is going to be moving away from them into the mid court and towards the right side. So you want to suck your opponent in close to that side wall play that boast and then the ball is moving away from them while they're going in towards that side wall. I hope that makes sense. If you have questions, feel free to put something in the comments. And then let's check out this last clip with Rami. First thing you see as always, that chest, the hips, the feet, everything's facing this back corner because that's where he's going to hit. He's got a nice racket prep like any other drive, any other shot to generate power. And then from there, you see him hit with an open racket face 
and his follow through, he's got this big follow through to generate the full power through the shot. And as he's hitting, he's pushing out of the shot. So it's all momentum to get him back to the tee, full swing like any other shot. And then when you think about the targets, the ball's hitting the front wall, and then the goal is to catch this sidewall floor nick and the ball rolls out. And there's that ball here so that it takes two bounces really early. And if you get really lucky, you catch that full nick and the ball rolls out of that corner. And there it is, Rosner's not even close to it. So there you have it. Super in-depth, <laughs> summarized version, truthfully, of the boast. Here's what you wanna remember. There are different types of boasts that you can use in different situations. The amount of pressure you are under will determine what kind of boast you wanna hit. Your tactics will determine what kind of boast you wanna hit. If you have always hit a straight drive from the midcourt and you are in front of your opponent, like you see in this middle image with Nick Matthew and Amar Shabana, if you can add that boast into your repertoire, your opponent will probably move, be moving to the back right and you will win the point outright. If you can learn to hit a quick two wall attacking boast from anywhere in the three quarter or backcourt area, but use it sparingly, you will probably get a winner every time you hit it because your opponent will not be used to seeing that shot. And if you remember the thing about patterns is when you start playing different shots, your opponent has to be more honest and it makes the game that much harder for them physically and mentally. When it comes to technique, you can hit the boast with an open racket face or a flat racket face. But the one common thing is you need to hit through that ball. We're not taking short swings. When it comes to movement, racket prep setup, all of that, same idea as everything else. The only difference is your contact point is usually mid or a little bit late. You're generally not hitting that boast early because you can't, it's not easy and natural to generate that angle for the racket to get the ball going into the sidewall. The defensive boast is amazing because it puts a reverse pressure on your opponent. <laughs> the three wall attack, the three wall attacking boast when you're going for the nick is a great shot, but it is a very high risk shot because if you miss it, that ball basically pops up into the middle of the court and you chances are you're gonna be under a lot of pressure. Keep that in mind, try out the different boasts. Now that you're aware of the different types of boasts that do exist, give them a try, leave a comment at the bottom of this video. I would love to hear from you. As always, if you're enjoying these videos, please hit the thumbs up, like it, subscribe, put a comment, share it with your friends. Let's try to build even more momentum so we can share this knowledge with everyone. Have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.